Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 53rd episode of VisionCon Live, your go-to nerdy talk show. I'm your host, Zach Wilson. You didn't come here to see me today. You can to meet the people of the hour. They're Shuichi and Sakura from Rampa series, Suigetsu from Naruto, Francis Drake from Fate series, and many more. They're the legendary dynamic duo who prove once and for all that you can, in fact, work with your spouse. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome the one, the only, Grant and Jessica George. Guys, how are we doing today? Hey, how are you? I like that intro. I should yeah, just say, every time good. we pick up the phone, it's like those stores when they pick up and they have that long diatribe they have to run through. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing great, guys. Like I said, kind of before we got started, it's rare when you guys, when you get to meet a hero of yours, let alone two of them. So I'm on cloud nine right now. Aww, All right. Thank you. <laughs> well, we got a Better lot part. to touch on, so we'll go ahead and jump right into it, guys. Now, as I kind of put in the intro, you guys are titans in the industry, household names, but what I wanted to know is where it all began. Was showbiz always the plan, guys, or did something happen kind of later on in life that kind of brought you to where we are today? And I also, we'd be remiss if we didn't ask this, how'd you guys meet? Okay. <laughs> hey, go ahead, honey. Nice. No, your story is funny. It's much better. Which one? Oh, you could start from the age you were two. Yeah. When you discovered your talent. Yeah. You know, um, it, literally, it started when I was about two years old, and I remember sitting in a high chair, and we had a friend over from England, and he had a pipe in his mouth, and he was talking, like, rah, 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 and I put my fork <laughs> in my mouth, and I started going, blah, 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 and I noticed everybody started laughing. Well, that went on eighth grade. I was able to sort of imitate everybody by that to by that point, get a lot of laughs, and um, <laughs> and then um, I had a godfather who was the drunk Otis on an old show called the Andy Griffith Show. Yeah, and um, and he was a huge voiceover guy. Like you know, in those days, it was like the Hanna Barbera crew, and that's who he worked with, Mel Blanc, and all those people. And um, he used to do voices for me, and I was like, "This is what I want to do." And I I never deviated, despite my parents' wishes for me to become a lawyer. I never deviated from that, and I just always always was able to really do a ton of different voices. I went into radio for a while. And then I shifted and I, I came back uh, to voiceovers. Yeah. So I think it started from my mimicking days and getting in a lot of trouble. <laughs> yeah. I did. It all worked <laughs> out. Well, I was sent to the principal's office and the worst part was my mom was a teacher at the school. No. <laughs> oh, yeah. We both had teachers at school and we couldn't get away with anything. Oh, I no know. No way. I even knew the lady who drove the bus. She knew my mom. I remember oh, her looking yeah. up in the mirror going, you better watch out. I know your mom. <laughs> I couldn't get away with anything. Yeah. I couldn't get away with anything. I mean, no, not through lack of trying, though. That's right. I even got in trouble with my bus driver, Mrs. Pines, because she used to, she was an old lady who wore moomoos, and she used to suck on lemon drops, and she'd look in the mirror and drive the whole time, and I'm thinking, she doesn't have her eyes on the road. <laughs> yeah, like, She's like this. <laughs> yeah, but, and then she'd suck those lemon drops, and I'd sit in the back of the bus, and I'd just intently stare at her face in that mirror. <laughs> be doing that in the seat doing that, like yeah. the kid next and, to me and like, i got in trouble you doing yeah <laughs> grant what about you how did you kind of kind of fall into it um i was always pretending whatever i saw on tv when i was a kid back then it was just saturday morning cartoons you didn't have i couldn't watch tv after school my, my parents didn't allow it so uh it was only saturdays and if you missed it that was it you'd have to wait there were no reruns and for you know 13 weeks so I remember wanting to be a part of that somehow. Uh, I would pretend anything. I mean, I was always running around my yard in like Robin costumes and, and the Scarecrow from the Wizard of Oz and this thing called Jason from Star Command. He was like, it was sort of like a Battlestar Galactica ripoff where this dude, would, it was actually the guy who did the Grey Poupon commercials. The one who would hold out his little Grey Poupon mustard. <laughs> he was actually Jason of Star Command. So I would like set up my whole room with all these little controls and I'd be flying with my window open looking at the, the city beyond. But uh, I knew that this is what I wanted to do. And I got thrown out of class a lot too. So <laughs> yeah. And how do we meet? That's an interesting story. She tells it the best. <laughs> I cast you? No. Oh, oh. How do we meet me? Uh, his, uh, uh, no, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, this is a good one for you. All right. 
my roommate at the time had a studio in his back uh, backyard. And Jessica at the time was teaching voiceover as well as doing it. And then she would record demos with her students when they were done. That was kind of the big finale. So another friend entered, had told her to send her demo at that time was what? Uh, to Jeff. To Jeff. Yeah, to Jeff, who roommate. was our friend, my roommate. And saying that, you know, he has a studio. So two years, flash, flash, flash forward, flash forward, or flash fast floods, forward. fast forward. Yeah. <laughs> Flash exactly. slide forward. Right. Uh, Jeff calls Jessica and says, I have your demo and who the hell are you? And she says, I'll tell you who the hell you are when you tell me who the hell you are. There was a lot that of hell. That is here. really true. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So maybe some they of the superlatives about, what, were different. Two hours on the phone. And she's like, oh my gosh, this guy's really cool. Let's meet. And uh, you did. The next morning. Yeah. Next morning. And the next then, morning, yeah. He said, hey, I want you to come back to my studio. And she said, hey, I don't want to, you know, have anything crazy happen. You stand there and I'll go here. <laughs> no, I just want to play you this demo of the guy that I'm making a, a, right now, who's my roommate. Tell me what you think. So she played my, he played my animation demo for her. And she says her, the hair on her arm stood up. And, yeah. I had like oh. some sort of biological response to his voice. Love it first. <laughs> love it first sound. Yeah, I love yeah, it. And my exactly. hair stood up on my, not that I have a lot of hair on my arm, but you know, but, um, but it stood up and I was like, oh, I got to meet this guy. And we did. And oddly enough, we had so many crossovers. This is really weird. Yeah, he, we were, we were like in those days, this is like almost 20 years ago, but in those days, we figured out a way to talk to each other on the internet. Do you remember that? Yes. So, so we all sat with our mics open all day long goofing. Oh. <laughs> and then Grant, Grant w sent me his resume or had his resume in a headshot. And I was like, you were in that movie? I was in that movie. We were in a movie nine years before we met. Pretty strange. Really? <laughs> yeah. And then she was talking about, did you go to the premiere that was at Raleigh Studios, which is in Hollywood and, you know, the red carpet and the whole works. And I'm like, no, I went to the director's grandma's house in the basement <laughs> with one of those big screen TVs with a red, blue and green dots. And, yeah. <laughs> and that was about it. She's like, we found out that we were actually in the same movie, but it had been shot twice. He did the student film yeah. and I did the real deal. <laughs> the one that went to all the festivals. Yeah. So. The one that went to all the festivals. So yeah. it was pretty fun. And then, and then she also up. came, the first time I introduced her to my family, I brought her, my, my cousins were there. Yeah. And uh, she recognized him. She walked in the room. She's like, I recognize you. You used to ride your bike all around UCSB, which is where she went to college. And so she knew that cousin. But then she had also worked at the, um, nursery, the, school. the nursery school at the college as well. And my cousin's daughter who would have been what one or two at the time was there too so she had been but now she was a grown-up yeah. so i was like that i re i know her so we had a lot of crossovers yeah yep. man fate didn't, fate didn't give you guys much option you guys just had to be together that's right yeah exactly <laughs> we make a lot of magic together it's fun and we have a lot of that magic to talk about today but before oh. we get too much into it guys i did want to reiterate a point fans of the show will already know this but for any of you that uh, this is like your first time joining us, first off, welcome. But second off, plenty of you have either messaged VisionCon directly or put in the live chat your guys' viewers' comments and questions. You guys are great. You guys have plenty of time to still do so, but we will get to those at the very end, guys. But with that said, the first intellectual property that we need to talk about is one that I kind of said at the top of the hour, you guys prove that spouses can work together and i can think of no better series to talk about to start us off with than of course danganronpa a, um, a game series i can never pronounce correctly but it's still fantastic nonetheless pretty and, good uh, dongan dongan i think danganronpa see, that, see that's what my girlfriend says and i keep on forgetting that but um anyway anime so, anime yeah anime yeah, yeah. yeah one of the two <laughs> uh, but so to start us off, let's talk first, Grant, how about you talk a little bit about Shuichi and then we'll get to Sakura, of course, with you, Jessica. Okay. Yes, and I love the fact that <laughs> the married couple playing these two characters put these two characters together. That'd be a, that'd be a real good couple. <laughs> I was more masculine than you, yeah. <laughs> uh, Shuichi was a very fun character to play because, I mean, being the ultimate detective, 
uh, that's something I always wanted to be when I was a kid. I, I love solving crimes, not the real crimes, but I, <laughs> I, love, I actually had this book called Solve a Crime. I think it was by Scholastic or something like that. And they had these short little crimes that you had to solve. You were the detective showing up on the scene and they'd give you all these clues and you'd have to kind of piece it all together by, you know, just the hints and the clues. And I loved, I loved that. So when we did Shuichi, Fortunately, this is a game where they actually gave me the whole, you know, the, all the lines of the script. So I was able to read along. So while he's kind of discovering things and figuring things out, I had the luxury of kind of discovering at the same time because I didn't know anything about the storyline until I was actually in the booth. So that was fun because there's a lot of there's a lot of games that we work that do not, you know, they kind of just give you your lines. Like when I did Warrior of Light for Dissidia or Keelik in Soul Calibur, it was just a line, 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 and you just work it line by line by line. You don't have, you have no idea how that kind of all ties together until you see the all, you know, the cut scenes all put together. So this was fun because I mean, I was just, I was piecing it together and they were <laughs> laughing at me because I'm like, wait a second, this is because they used that and, you know, it was, it was a lot of fun. I also like playing that, the duality too, where you've got a character who's kind of timid and shy and you've got the hat because of his guilt and, and, uh, but at the same time, you know, he's a very sharp reasoning detective. So that's always fun to play those characters. And then for Jessica, I want to talk about the character that <laughs> is a real story. When I told my girlfriend that uh, I was interviewing both of you and I told her one of the characters that you did, Jessica, she literally, front line, I'm dying, dug her nails into my arm out of anticipation. Let's talk. About yes. Sakura. <laughs> yeah. All right, Miss Miss Genderbender, I think um, she is. Sakura was awesome to play. I I get cast in roles like this a lot, but I think this one kind of was the leader in showing that I could do a role like this because I had to be tough. And when I went in there and I saw the character, because we don't see anything, I don't think I saw it in the audition. I think I, I don't know if I auditioned for this one or they just hired me. Wow. Mommy it, knows. Mommy and Bang Zoom. Yeah, when these Bang kind of roles Zoom. come through, <laughs> yeah. she just calls Jessica. And yeah, you know what I loved about her is that she's like the epitome of woman. She, there's something really hot and sexy about her and she'll fight to her death. She's loyal as all anything. Um, you know, all six foot four, 218 pounds of her muscle. But she's still oh, cute. Nice. But she's still <laughs> cute. She drinks protein coffee like me. And she's, there, there's a, a certain loyalty to her. Um, she's really loyal to her friends. But given a moment where somebody crosses her, mm, not, a good, not a good idea. I love doing this. It was a challenging voice and I remember going in and like seeing her muscles and seeing her face and thinking there's like a masculine edge to this so I kind of threw it in there and they went with it and I was like are you kidding me sometimes but they're like yeah man it fits <laughs> well Dankenrampa is well known for its you know kind of dark and foreboding tone along with its very unique characters and you know Shuichi and Sakura are definitely no exception so I did want to ask when voicing these characters was it ever kind of difficult getting into such kind of a somber and dark headspace in order to give such a compelling performance? Yeah, I mean, that's something that we love doing is, is getting into these characters. I mean, it, it, we're kind of method actors in that, <laughs> that regard. Like I love being in a dark booth and, and just kind of just suspending my belief and just getting in there into the headspace of that character and, and kind of believing what you're seeing. When I was working on a show called Requiem from the Darkness, that was this cool anime that I don't know that a lot of people have seen. It's like a 13 episode thing that should have gone on for another 100 because it was all yeah. about the 100 ghost stories and it was really cool. Oh, shit. That was the first job that I, I really had to lead in a series and kind of got into that, you know, really being in the moment and really being terrified by the things that were happening to me. <laughs> So there's, there's a great thing that we do when we get into character and it's fun to watch Jessica come out of the booth for an audition or when she's working a job here at home because, you know, we're in these characters and then you come out and there's like about this 10 second <laughs> time frame where it's kind of like the character dissolves away and the real person comes back and you're like, whoa. Oh my God. It's like what, being on ice skates, love. like being on ice skates and you get off that and you're <laughs> still, still skating moving. afterwards. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, we just don't like to wing it. We love to get into these. Sure 
the mode of it and the characters of it and you know really the headspace of it and i you know props to the directors because they they're the ones who are who are throwing us into they know the whole story like it's their job to know the whole story and to bring us into that moment and and i like the dark and foreboding ones because it's kind of right one level you know and unless i'm fighting but uh, we could talk about that later <laughs> but it i <laughs> It, it's um, it, it it really the better the direction you you latch onto it right away, and if we've been doing it a long time, so really listening to what's going on. Also, when we have an opportunity, whenever they can do playback, if other people have recorded before us, just showing us the whole scene, so we're getting a feeling for it. Because again, we're only going in for our part, so we're not seeing it from top to bottom we don't know what's going on in the background so that direction has to be there for us well i the next segment that i do want to go towards uh it's gonna be a little different so grant we'll start with you because this is technically your character but then uh, the second part of what i want to open up to both of you because i feel like you both will have a unique approach to it that character of course now a lot of people know especially if you are a seasoned veteran fan uh, there is what is known as the big three in shonen anime. There is Bleach, One Piece, and of course, Naruto. And the character I want to talk about is everybody's <laughs> kind of a pseudo surfer boy, water boy. That, of course, is the one, the only, Sugetsu. So <laughs> before we dive kind of too much into uh, kind of where I want to go with this, let's first just give us a brief overview about Suigetsu, any fun anecdotes involved in getting the part, anything at all, Grant. Sure. Yeah, I remember auditioning for Bleach and Naruto. First of all, Bleach was the first one, I think. And I'm like, Bleach? What, what is that? This will go nowhere. <laughs> and like nine years later, after working on that, <laughs> it's still going. Same thing with, with uh, Naruto and, and playing Suigetsu. And somebody asked me, how do you get into that character? Well, it's actually just, I, I literally go into Crispin, Christian Slater doing his like Panasonic ad. So I kind of get into it like that and then just lazy <laughs> it up. And then it gets all whiny all the time. So that's really, that's the way to get in. There's one thing that we do as, as voice actors is there's always like this little, root, 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 root. like the root voice that gets you into the character. And a lot of times it's a, it's a phrase that you'll use and uh, sometimes that comes when they're Onomoto playing. Onomoto Gobi. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there are certain phrases that we use, like if we're trying to get into a specific dialect that we've kind of gotten into. Jessica gets uh, called in a lot for, for Linda Hunt jobs. In this. <laughs> and what's our root phrase? There, there was, was an, an apple. apple. Right. <laughs> and that pulls her right into that character. So, so we get to, yeah, I start with Christian Slater, add a whole bunch of wine, and off we go. This kind of wine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then you have to like slide all of my lines about twelve seconds <laughs> yeah. to the left a slow. to breakfast, as we call it in the industry. <laughs> well, and so and to kind of open up to both of you, uh, but like going with Suigetsu first. Uh, Suigetsu, you know, part of one of the biggest shonen anime of all time, and so with shonen anime, there is a lot of fight scenes, and you know, Naruto very well known for its very intense fight scenes. So for both of you, when you guys know that you are going into perhaps more of a intense, more ex dexterity required uh, voice acting session, uh, what, is there anything in particular that you guys do maybe in preparation, anything you do during to kind of sustain your voice? And then especially, is there anything you guys do after the fact to kind of recover your voice after uh, putting it through that long and strenuous day? Well, I'll tell you, Zach, we don't really know that we're gonna be doing something strenuous. Really? No. Except for the movie she used to cast. Jess used to be the, the voice casting and directing for all, well, Miramax had a vault of like the old Jet Li and, and yes. uh, um, with uh, the Jackie Chan movies. So they would pull these out and they'd have these long seven minute fights where it all, it's just, and we had to record it and replace all of that fight sound for seven full minutes getting whooped by Jet Li or mm -hmm. <laughs> whooped by. And so. we've seen people pass out to their, like pass out. Yeah, there is yeah. a secret. You definitely have to keep your knees, knees bent. bent. You've got to breathe because you'll start to see the little Milky Way speckles. You and know. you can stop, <laughs> you know, you stop so that you can breathe. Yeah. So, I mean, it's been interesting because we both had COVID, we think, a long time ago, and it's kind of affecting our 
our fight scenes we have to do anything tomorrow where we're fighting i don't think no. so playing soccer maybe <laughs> but <laughs> yeah but um i i think that there's a couple things when i'm doing the walkers on well you know where the, the walkers are dead. the walking dead um <laughs> those are days where you know that your throat's going to be ripped it's usually done friday at three o'clock in the afternoon so that we have the whole weekend to recover i will inevitably lose my voice on doing anything that's zombie like because people know me to put me in the big girl roles so i'm leading with my voice a lot and i lose i'll lose my voice i definitely will lose my voice um I don't eat chocolate anymore, but there are cho chocolate on stage Hershey's all the time. Kisses. Hershey's Kisses, Lay's potato chips, believe it or not, the oil in it. Yeah. And the I, biggest secret of all that was shared to you by a taxi cab driver in New York years ago. Oh, no, no, that's the second biggest secret now. Oh, but okay. um, ginger, ginger water, really? that gets your voice right back. Like boiled, cut down ginger, boiled, and, and then steeped, and then you drink it. Oh, like this it's oh, yeah. it's nasty <laughs> i like it it's spicy but it's good <laughs> but the other one there's a chinese herb that's a kind of a liqueur, liqueur i've been giving it to everybody and now it's on all the stages you just have to keep coating your throat while you're working keep mm -hmm. coating your throat yeah it's an that's an exhausting time you come out of those sweaty you come out of those tired yep the the problem is also your feet have to be planted so you're only working right. from like the knees up and a lot of times you're working on what are fully pits underneath so they've covered these up <laughs> with just some yeah so if you're moving too much it's going to cut through you're going to hear that sound so okay. you cannot move so i mean you're but you're taking every punch there's you can hear the difference between being punched in the stomach or hit across the face with a bat. And I've had all in my childhood because I was that class clown. So, sure. no. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, we're putting it into us. So when you're actually done with those fight scenes, you are exhausted because you've really fought. You put one half without receiving a lot of damage. Grant and I did a uh, workshop and we were showing how to do efforts. And we, it was like the first time that we ever did it. And we chased these two characters live action. And we chased these two characters. And at the end, we got like claps. And I was like, what? That's so weird. But <laughs> Then you put somebody up to it to ch chase what's going on. So if the girl has her mouth open or is swinging, you have to know what the difference is between swinging and taking a hit, you know, and really understanding what that difference is. But it was, we were kind of surprised by that, but it looked, I guess it's a lot harder doing it. And we were, of course, pouring sweat after it. You work <laughs> when you're doing after days of efforts. And then you also have scars. I love efforts. <laughs> you get lots of scars in the throat from them. I've, Oh I did uh, Cho Gall from World of Warcraft, and that was the first time I ever did it. It was a four-hour session, for, and Blizzard is super cool. Like, they yeah. will bring every single throat remedy on stage with you. You have, like, ten things sitting in front of you, so yeah. they do take care of their actors big time, and it, total respect. Need a break? But the problem with this is they wanted me, they wanted a sloppy, loud, growly thing, and sometimes you audition for things, you're like... What if I get this? I'm screwed. <laughs> so <laughs> I did get it, and they wanted everything, you know, like spitty and sputtery. So I was like drinking water before every take. So I had like a towel underneath me, but it was soaked by the end of this thing, and my throat was gone. Oh, and yeah. it, I mean, I could, it still has left its, its toll. And every now and then that character comes around, and you're like, Ugh. it's only been about five lines recently. And so you lose your voice twice a year about, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I used to, which was weird. Not, Not anymore. anymore. Yeah, it does seem a uh, conflict of interest with your guys' line of work. <laughs> yeah, I like my voice, like, deep and sexy and scratchy. That's right. Hell yeah. Well, guys, we're about at the halfway point, so I did want to reiterate, plenty of you guys have put in the live chat or message vision comment directly, your viewers' comments and questions. Still have plenty of time to do so. Just wanted to remind you guys that we're at about the halfway point. So, guys, you have guys have a long repertoire and list of characters that you've played throughout the years don't have time to get through all of them throughout about the 30 minutes we have left but i wanted to open it up to you guys starting with jessica what are some of the roles that you love the most that you've done throughout the years maybe ones that you wish got more recognition anything at all start with you jessica well i think my favorite role ever was oh who's oh um my, flock of seagulls yeah flock of seagulls my favorite role ever i thought oh gosh i don't know what if i had a favorite role ever but uh, uh, 
I, you know, I raised a lot of everybody who's younger than I am on, on Land Before Time. I played Tria, the Triceratops. Yeah. And the, people are like, whoa, that's so cool. I grew up with Land Before Time. So that was a good one. Um, I, I, I loved, I was on a show called Zack Storm. It's on Netflix. And it's so good. I went into that audition. I didn't want to go. I was in a mood. And I don't get in moods very often, but that was a mood. I didn't think I was going to come. They, I, I did it. And it was written in a way where they wanted me in a certain way. And, I'm, and I walked out of the studio and I'm, you know, I've been in it long enough where I said to Ezra Weiss, I said, I'm, I, I got, he was casting and same person who does Miraculous, Ladybug. And I turned around, I went back in, I go, this character needs an accent. And they, believe it or not, cast the first voice. Like the, they didn't want an accent and they had me do the whole couple of first shows without an accent. They turned around and said, we want her to do it again. So I got, I got a second shot at that. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> um, pets in Sailor Moon. I love the whole storyline with that. Um, I love all the Hotel Transylvania stuff that we've done, Transylvania stuff. I, I play a lot of the witches and that hands down animation will always be my favorite. Hands down. It, it doesn't matter. Zhu Rong and Dynasty Warriors because that had such a long life. Um, uh, Doraemon, which is, you know, like the <laughs> Flintstones to America. So it's been around forever and I played Big G's mom and I, I love that see some of my characters coming up um Funny. oh and another one was glob and fodder snakes and gumballs right fodder snakes and gumballs that was a big character that was a great one too that was a fun show and i wish uh, that, that was taken up more too that was uh it was on netflix and it was australian i think it was australian yeah. artwork but a really yeah. cool show about these crazy like creatures that are all around the recycling world and <laughs> uh, i know her and um Miss and Queen. yeah and also um in little witch academia i play yeah. holbrook and she is she's feisty and i love her and that's the oldest character i've ever played wow yeah <laughs> so i get i'm i'm starting to which is really cool because i remember when i was casting these things we would have like two ladies we would call <laughs> and i love it because i can go from 30s all the way up to like hundreds and breath and to death. Breath, well, I don't do breath to death anymore. <laughs> I, I'll avoid some of the twenty-year-old stuff because there's so many good people who can do those. So I, I, I have just a lot of favorite characters. Anytime I'm working on something that I really love, it's fun. There was a fun one called Baxter and Bananas with uh, Mark, Mark Hamill. Har was Mark Hamill. Not yeah, Harmon. No, not <laughs> Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill was Baxter the monkey, and or is he bananas? And Baxter was a boy, whatever. It was a fun little... Uh, a long time ago. A long yeah. time ago, but that was one I liked. That was yeah. one of my favorites of hers. Yep. Ooh. Mine? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I agree with Jessica that I think uh, animation is kind of like the holy grail because you just it gives you the freedom when you're doing original animation to really put your own stamp and your own signature on it. You get to play around you know creating the character whether it's the little you know nuances and the, the pitch the pace the whatever you really get a mold it when you're doing anime which i love it, you're kind of locked into the performance and you want to honor that original performance of course and but there is a timing that has to go with it as well one of the things that i've started doing that i i love doing with the anime i'm uh, there's a new series called no bless that i'm in and i play a character named shark in that and Takio and but there was another one also uh Chikage Rukudo from uh <laughs> from um um I, I'm blanking on the name um Durarara and that was the first time that I, I really enjoyed the anime in the uh, because it gave me the ability to to mess around with the timing you know, instead of just doing, because I don't like just going there and just giving a voice and matching what's on the thing. Like, I want to kind of jack around with the character and get a little silly with it. Um, so that was, that was one of my favorites in anime, was, was that, that dude. I, my favorites, actually, have, have, are Daniel from Thunder and the House of Magic. That was an original animation. Of that was so movie. good. Because that one, they just let me run wild. I was the main villain in that. And then... Uh, Bigfoot family is coming up and I play the bad guy in that too. So yeah, those are always, 
there's a lot of leeway in that where you get a kind of the you do one take of the same thing even when i'm playing ant-man i mean it's it's like you do one take as scripted because you're going to give them what they want <laughs> the next one a little different variation and the third one just put your own spin on it and go crazy and that ends up most likely being the one they use if they haven't animated already yeah. so yeah <laughs> all right well we've looked at a lot of beloved characters but next I want to look at the people behind them. I want to talk about everybody's favorite voice over couple. I want to talk about you. Oh, well, I hit the button. I want to talk about you guys, <laughs> which first, for audio listeners, you won't be able to really experience this. But for those of us watching uh, visually, I just love this photo of the two of you. Thank you. We did that last year. <laughs> it's kind of sitcom -y. Yeah. So where did the idea come from kind of to combined forces to become the one and only voiceover dynamic duo and kind of what are some of the stuff that you guys do as the kind of the voiceover dynamic duo for your guys' fans? Well, one thing we do a lot of was husband and wife radio spots together because we do voice everything. Voice. We finish each other's sentences. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so there is a genuine chemistry that comes from playing a husband and wife in, in radio spots that you know, you can get two actors and they'll come up with something pretty cool. But when you've got people who really know each other and they know their nuances, it makes it very interesting. And it, it, we just found that there were a lot of projects that we were doing together. It just made more sense to kind of combine into one and market ourselves together because people really got a kick out of hiring both of us. Like they'd be like, oh, oh, you have a husband. Well, okay, let's get him in there. Oh, you have a wife that does this too. Oh, yes. Uh, Zach so. is, is highlighting. Grant was supporting his scandal bar <laughs> when we met. That's true. That is a true story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, they're, now they're cool, but that was not when they were cool. It was not cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, not cool. I, and and then he, I, I was laid back and cool at a bagel store when we first met when Jeff brought him and he was late. And Jeff and I were sitting there having a bagel and Grant was late and I was ready to bail. And he walks up and he goes, oh, sorry. And this mustache isn't mine. I'm in a movie, which is so <laughs> LA. And I was like, that is yeah. so LA. Ew! <laughs> I know yeah. it's worse. The mustache yeah, or that, that comedy. Yeah, that comedy. <laughs> I was about to say, like, I'm I'm from SoCal. I'm from San Diego, but even I know that's LA. Ah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We were just there last weekend. Um, yeah. So, um, you know, like Grant said, like ditto to everything he was saying about the chemistry. It cannot be done. You hear it, but we 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 are it. We're real. We we have a signature to our sound. I always kind of played the woman in the know, and Grant plays like the dumb husband not really dumb <laughs> husband mustache. yeah but the one that yeah the one that doesn't really get it and his wife has to explain it to him so people who are casting us and know us really understand that's it we've had a lot of pushback yeah, right for us too oh yeah we We're did small spots alec a little shout out to yeah, alec, alec who oh, we was writing him. spots just for us and then went on for like two three years yeah but he knew exactly exactly that he would give us the copy and we would go off the page. We would just not stick to it. And that's <laughs> the glory of it is that unless I'm told stick to the page, I usually do an anime, but I throw in, uh, and, and uh, cartoons, I throw in a lot of nuances, we both do. So we don't just read the lines that are given, we feel the lines. So there's one thing mentally being able to have it come out of your thought, your thought process, and the other is, oh boy, the other is going <laughs> into your like heart, like what would I actually say in this? Um, I love working with Grant. He's my favorite partner. I actually get a little pissed off when somebody else is cast or, <laughs> uh, or you know, if he's cast with somebody else. Uh, we have that with our son, actually, where we had <laughs> an on-camera audition where we went for uh, my son, Dax. It was probably three or four at the time. And all it was, it was an on-camera thing for a truck. And I was, he was just supposed to be in my arms, asleep. I was supposed to take him out. He gets the call back. I don't. He goes back there, finds out that he's not going to get to work with his real dad. It's going to be a pretend dad. He's like, not happening. <laughs> not happening. Drove all the way Loyalty. Miles yeah. to get to not this happening. audition. I'm like, all right, I get it. I respect that. Yeah. But I, we've had some pushback yeah. about that. We really about have. Putting it together, like it confuses people, yeah. I guess. Yeah. And so, you know, we did kind of separate it for a while and create our own little identities. And, and you know, that was okay. But 
we kind of came back and this is the last incarnation of our website was for the last year was to kind of just make it fresh and keep it very, very simple. And just, you know, we we'll keep be doing reinventing ourselves all the time. You always have to in this industry. Exactly. Stay, you know, things change. Yeah. Like, this is can, you too. I can totally admit when I was wrong because ladies and gentlemen, kind of taking you guys behind the veil a little bit. When I originally reached out, I reached out to, Grant, and then when I did a bit of digging, I found out, oh, your wife, I'm a huge fan of your wife as well, so I tried to convince the two of them to do separate episodes, thinking, you know, <laughs> I think, you know, it would be great for either episode, just kind of have them for each episode, but they're like, no, 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 you definitely want us to be in one episode, <laughs> I can 100% tell you guys, and I, if I'm lying, I'm dying, I'm <laughs> wrong. All right. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Big comedy yeah. here. Yeah. Putting this together. That's funny. You're you've got something up on the screen that people who are doing audio can't hear, but it's called You Called Us. And that started as a total goof. It's real phone calls where we bleep out like whatever they're selling or whatever the product the telemarketers is. Telemarketers call. But it's telemarketers. You called us and you're about to face your your destiny. Our so, goal is to keep them on phone as, as long, long as, as we can. can. And this started because this <laughs> one guy called for uh, timeshares in Florida and he we had him on the phone for so long. Somehow we were like, husband and wife, but yet brother and sister. And you know, <laughs> her oldest kid was 40. There was another kid, she was smoking All the way the down to two. And, that we convinced them that we were in the uh, snakes religion, you know, where they have rattlesnakes and stuff like that. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, we have gone for like 45 like, minutes. The <laughs> lights are out, you guys. I have to leave. The lights are out. The lights are out. But we've got some good ones on there where we just get people. We, we have it's all real add. stuff. I don't think we added all anything real stuff. out there. We, we just, just grab bleep. a character and go. And, and you know, <laughs> one guy was like, okay, I'm under my desk. You're, this is too much. I can't, I can't. Everybody's laughing at me. And <laughs> <laughs> we try to get them to hang up on us. No, we try to keep them on the line as possible when they try to hang up on us. And <laughs> that's why we call it. You called us. I love the name, too. <laughs> hey, you call us. <laughs> exactly. All right, guys. Well, if you haven't already, now is your final chance to do so. Either message VisionCon directly, your viewers' comments and questions, or put in the live chat. Because, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the plug zone. Mm. Jessica and Grant, now is your opportunity to plug, promote, advertise, whatever verb you want to use. Anything you want. The floor is yours, guys. <laughs> Well, we're still working on Miraculous. That goes on forever and hopefully as long as Naruto. And yeah. um, let's see, we have that, that film I mentioned coming up on February 26th is going to be on Netflix, Bigfoot Family. And uh, No Bless is going on right now. Um, we start a new series tomorrow. Yeah, Ooh. we also do live action, what's called, um, Looping. looping so creating the background walla for movies and tv series and we're starting one tomorrow bigfoot so did you mention that one yeah yeah and you know we've been it, things have been a real weird for us because of covid so you know we've just been latching on to wherever we can um and whatever whatever we can do they had to get it worked out so we've been doing a lot of live action i think more so this yeah. year because we figured out how to get it into our um, studios at home very quickly. So I think I think anime will start picking up more and more and more. It, it will. We're hoping. We're hoping so. Yeah. Yeah. Now um, we've all worked out how to work from home. But we're. But I think this whole year and a half is has gotten us a little more into the heart also, and so we're doing just some really cool projects on the side like. Exp just expanding our wings so we're coming out with uh, the we just with like remembering people from COVID who have passed away from COVID um, we're working on an amazing project a live action uh, docu-series that Grant and I wrote we're working on a we're writing an awesome tv show wow. like uh, about mental health and so, like, I don't know, our hearts just came out and to, to do the work for us this year. Uh -huh. yeah. And yeah. A, a big thing that people are missing from conventions are autographs. And so a lot of people, myself included, you know, clearly if you guys look just behind me, yeah. I collect yeah. autographs and plenty of other people do as well. So to kind of supplement that, that, you know, people are missing out on by not being able to go to physical conventions due to public safety, 
you guys are offering autographs. So do you guys want to talk a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, we created, there's an autograph page you can get to from our website, dynamicduovo.com, and you can either yeah. scroll down to the homepage, there's a link that'll get you to the autograph page, or just go to dynamicduovo.com slash autographs, and that'll get you there. So it's just some of our more popular characters. I think that's what's been so much fun when we go to conventions in the past, is that the characters that people really connect with or the shows or the games that they really love the most surprised me, you know, and so you learn what people really connect with. And some of these are here on this page. If you're interested, we're doing, you know, we, we sign for free. We're just asking for, I think it's $15 we put on there just to cover the, the print, the postage and the packaging, get it out to wherever you are. And uh, anything that you like, we'll sign, just give it, sign the email or send it to the email for right now. And we'll, you know, whatever message you want to put on there, we're happy to do it, get it to you as soon as possible. Um, if you want to get a couple sent to the same place, we'll give you a discount. We'll work it out. We don't have a full on store going on yet. This is just kind of a, hey, the need has arisen and we want to put something out there so we can stay connected with all you. And if you're an audio listener, that email is info at dynamicduovo.com. And guys, I have a bunch of links. If you're watching this live on Facebook, got a bunch of links in the uh, live chat right there. And then if you guys are watching this later on YouTube, it's going to be down there in the description box below, guys. And with that, guys, we're on our final segment. And that is, of course, viewers' comments and questions. So as I right. you guys... Just going to divvy it kind of 50-50. Going to take some from the messenger and some from the live chat. So real quick, let me pull that all up real quick. Okay. All righty. Okay. So first one is going to be from Sean, who said, Hi, Jessica. I'm a huge fan of The Walking Dead, and I had no idea you voiced some of the walkers. How fun is that? And is that an ever hard role to do? Uh-huh. <laughs> the hardest yeah <laughs> don't set up your singing lesson after you go work on that one yeah you know yeah it's um oh wow it's eight hours of throat ripping fun and like i said sean you do it at uh you do it at three o'clock on a friday afternoon and pray for that your voice remains or comes back to you by monday morning when you have to go to work because there have been times when I've been like, I uh, can't do it, you guys. It's rare, though. I'll work through sickness and stuff, and most yeah. people don't know. But, um, yeah, it's, it's a real throat ripper. A real thro throat ripper. And it's so interesting because the whole I, – I, we lived in Atlanta for the last two years. And now we're back in L.A. But, um, you know, Atlanta's where a lot of that shot. So we've gone to the studios – um to I think we've been in the woods yeah we've been at, yeah right they there. could have been in our backyard um i'm more but, afraid of the copper heads there though the whole walker uh training is amazing you know it made me take it a little bit more seriously too this the walker school that people have to go to is zombie school and the makeup that they sit through it's it's no joke it's worse that than show, clown college yeah that shows <laughs> no right that shows no joke but it is a throw well, Raylene tuned in and said, I just wanted to let you guys know that Sakura and Shuichi, I love these two characters, and you guys both did a really great job as them. Thank Aww. you. That's so nice. That. Those were fun yeah. roles. Well, my boy Aaron tuned in and said, to Grant, because of Scott Lane's motif and growing slash shrinking superpower, would you want him to cross over in Bug's Life or Alice in Wonderland, and why? Oh, Aaron. Oh, yeah. I think it would be more fun in Alice in Wonderland. There's some wacky characters there that I think you'd have some fun with. That's fun. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Better than shrinking with the honey and the kids. Oh, my God. That giant <laughs> spider? Ah, oh, get out of here. <laughs> okay, so Caroline tuned in and said, besides acting and directing, what are some of your guys' favorite things to do or hobbies? All right. Yeah, Caroline, is that who? <laughs> um, well, we're totally avid kayakers. Oh, dang. So, yeah. Um, and DIYers. Big kayakers. We, we are Ooh. tomorrow buying <laughs> e-bikes, which I'm so excited about. 
Um, we, we saw a guy today. It was a, an elderly man driving his grandchild on an e-bike so, so fast. fast. I'm like, and then there was another guy, probably about, I don't know, half a mile behind him. It was kind of like pedaling. I'm like, I thought that's probably the son <laughs> trying, trying to, to catch him. up to his child to save him from grandpa. But, yeah, that was scary. Whew. Um, we're total we're and the other thing that we are is designers armchair designers, armchair designers. we design oh. and um and like i don't know we we like we i read a lot of magazines and we we do a lot of reading and we're we're totally into not wooky wooky metaphysical stuff but like bettering ourselves and so we we study every single morning we meditate and we visualize every single morning and that's a big part of us that's so cool yeah yeah yeah, yeah. we're big we're big like infinite possibilities person and um i've been a marriage and family counselor and a life coach for the last 16 17 years and where, where, where is their time to sleep, guys? <laughs> we and make, we have two kids. And we have and two, two dogs. boys Ooh, and two dogs. We used to have you know, 21 cats, too, but that's a whole different story. Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, we got time for two more questions, guys. All right. The next one's going to be from Melissa, who said, Hi, Jessica. I'm working on my Panay cosplay right now. Aww. I love her so much. I just wanted to know, were there any fond memories in voicing her? You know what? Pane is like, or Pane, yeah, Pane is like the, everybody's favorite. Yeah. Everybody's favorite. A lot of the guys too, you know. People come up to you at, at the conventions, but like, I married your character. Yeah, or, yeah. <laughs> and it's sitting there, like they pushing either, me aside. Right. They either really like me or really like Grant, but they don't like us both. You know, I've had girls like, uh huh. Grant's like, oh, this is my wife Jessica, and they're like, uh huh. Anyway, <laughs> they want to talk about it. Um, Pane was a great character. We, I, Pane just came back for something this past uh, Hyrule yeah. Warriors I believe or yeah. not Hyrule Warriors um Fire uh, a game yeah yeah mm -hmm. and um that was really fun to do and I loved the new directors who wrote that stuff so um it's I always that's cup of tea right yeah yeah and um I love working there too it's it's oh just gosh. a fun fun character I'm so glad Melissa that it's your favorite thank you and I can't wait to see your cosplay. Send it. Send it to Zoom. Send it to our email because I love yeah. that stuff. Send me your thing. Hell yeah. I want to see you. All right. And then finally, Chris tuned in and said, hey, Grant, what was it like voicing Lancer in Fate Zero? And was your time voicing for Lancer any different than when you were voicing? And apologies in advance. I'm probably going to butcher this. Uh, Uzu Senageyama in Kill a Kill. <laughs> Kill a Kill. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah, it was a lot different working on the two of those. Uh, Uzu, that was a harsh one because Kill a Kill is just such a loud show. Everybody's just, <laughs> I've got, you know, these, uh, <laughs> I'm just like, holy <laughs> can we take that again three or four more times? Uh, the, the, the crew over at Bang Zoom again, they, when they were, they really want things to be so good and match the original performances. Mm -hmm. So, they would keep, you know, Authentic. pushing that one to go through uh, more and more. What was the other character? The um, Lancer. Yeah, and Lancer. Then, and also then done there. Um, Lancer was was a great character, and I, you know, kind of like him and uh, Warrior of Light and um, Izuru Kira from Bleach. The kind of that those are probably like the closest to me in terms of my own personality and just kind of being, you know, loyal and you know, calm and and. Um, you know, straight shooter kind of person, but when pushed to the limit, you know, will rise to the challenge. Lancer's a little comical, I think, in the sense that he's, you know, you always have to declare what you're about to do. And, you know, there's a, an honor to it, sort of the, uh, the knight's code that you have to follow. So that, that was fun. They're both fun characters, but I would say if I had to go back, I would do the Lancer scene. I actually love that, the Lance, the spoiler alert, but the Lancer, the end of it, Lancer scene. That was like one of my favorite things. Oh my God, through. yeah. It's heart-wrenching too. It's just, uh, yeah, it's, it's harsh. And, you know, people were, there was a good reaction from that too. I also like the, playing Nob in um, Hunter, Hunter yeah. X Hunter, because that, that was fun, his little breakdown scene. People are like, I like that better than the original actor. I'm like, okay, cool. But that comes <laughs> yeah. from from uh, Tony Oliver, who directs over at Bang Zoom, is just, I mean, 
being an actor himself and a great one, he's also a phenomenal director and kind of gives you that that freedom to to be like that knob scene in, in Hunter was, you know, he just let me go in one take. And a lot of it was kind of a head voice, but it was just to be able to go through that whole scene of breaking down and losing your stuff uh, is a real gift for an actor because you don't you're not breaking up that continuity and kind yeah. of go through it. And, and uh, he actually directed um, uh, Fate Zero too. So. Tony is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, with that, this has been episode 53 of MissionCon Live. Now, before we wrap things up, Jessica, Grant, any final thoughts to leave us on? Sage-like wisdom, anything at all? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> um, well, I would say as much as we love you guys playing and watching this as much as you can, too, get out there and have fun in the world. <laughs> you know, it's nice to go out and and I, I, from a from a fan standpoint, we get cast when our fans write, like they'll write Bang Zoom, they'll write Funimation, they'll write and say we want to see Grant and Jessica. I'm not kidding because yeah, that's super important. They'll, sure. they'll take suggestions. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm, a lot of times we're like, we have a role for you, and I'm like, that's fan based, as opposed to you have to audition, you have to audition. So we are so appreciative of that, you know, that you just keep cranking the wheel. It helps us a lot because it says you're paying attention. Yeah. And, you know, we're just so grateful. So rally the, rally the troops, guys. Everybody, I want to see that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been episode 53 of Vision Con Live. Thank you guys so much for watching. I, of course, am your host, Zach Wilson. But much more importantly, these have been my two very special guests, Grant and Jessica George. Make sure to check out all the links down in the description box below. And until next time, guys, always remember that life's better when you have friends to share it with. Aww.